Is there something God wants you to do for Him? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Two paupers wandered from town to town, begging for alms. One was a giant who had never been sick in his life. The other was a cripple who had never known anything but sickness. The giant used to laugh at the cripple. At last, the two paupers reached the capital city. They arrived just at the time when a great misfortune had taken place. Two of the king's most trusted servants had died suddenly. One was his personal bodyguard, the strongest man in the land. The other was his personal physician, the most skillful in the entire realm. So the king sent his courtiers into his kingdom to gather all the strong men and doctors who wished to apply for the vacant posts. The king finally chose one strong man and one doctor from among all the applicants. He then asked them to furnish proof of their fitness for the posts. Your majesty, said the strong man, bring me the strongest and biggest man in the city and I will kill him with one blow of my fist. The doctor said, your majesty bring me the most helpless cripple you can find and i will make him well in a week the king sent his courtiers to bring the strongest man and the weakest cripple they could find they soon came upon the two paupers and brought them before the king with one blow of his fist the strong man killed the giant then the doctor examined the cripple and after a week's treatment he made him well the strength of the strong often proves to be their downfall, while the weakness of the weak often saves them. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus chooses His twelve apostles. In every major decision and event in Jesus' life, He goes up a mountain to pray. We can see this in the Sermon on the Mount, the Transfiguration, and after He feeds the 5,000. This time it is to pick His core group of twelve. An apostle is to be distinguished from a disciple. An apostle is sent out on a mission and is usually given a specific order to do so. In Jesus' time, they were those who witnessed the resurrection of Jesus and were empowered by him to preach, to cast out demons, and heal the sick, to prove that he is the truth, the way, and the life. He sends them in pairs to the Jewish towns and villages. A disciple, on the other hand, is essentially a follower who devotes time and effort to learning the teachings of his teacher and living this out in his life. Paul was a special case after his encounter with Jesus in Damascus. In our reflection today, we focus on three important points. First, we ask ourselves, what is God calling me to do? You know you are called in many different ways as a priest or religious, as a married person, as a single young adult, as a child to one's parents, as a parent to one's child, or as a worker in your workplace. For some, the calling can come from a tug in your heart that makes you suddenly rise with energy from your stupor after praying, and this becomes henceforth a lifelong mission. For others, it might be a process a series of experiences that leads you to this vocation to preach the good news to others by your words and witnessing with your life. Second, He chose you and you should not doubt it. You need not be rich, popular, and with a lot of influence, although many among the so-called elite have been called to. Jesus selected ordinary people, many of them fishermen, to serve Him. Matthew was a tax collector, corrupt and hated by his own people for collaborating with the colonial powers, the Romans. Simon was a fanatical nationalist who, along with other militants, was determined to oust the Romans from power. Mind you, about half of the apostles were hot-tempered and prone to violence. For example, Peter attacked Malchus in the Garden of Gethsemane. John and James wanted to burn a Samaritan city for refusing their entry. Bartholomew was a bigot, one who is intolerantly devoted to his own opinions and is prejudiced against others as he was against Nazareans. In your current state of life, as you listen to this, 
you perhaps are being asked by our Lord to find more meaning in your life by serving Him. Why would He bring you to this vlog if He didn't want to lead you to a greater level of service? Third, believe and pray that God's grace is all you need to help you in serving Him. Of course, you need to make effort, but even that needs God's grace to make you an effective instrument because oftentimes you need to die to yourself so that others might be brought to life in Jesus. In dying to yourself, that means exercising much forbearance and forgiveness, much patience and self-control, much goodness and kindness, much unconditional love, you can eventually gain eternal joy. But surely, when you die to yourself here on earth, there is a measure of peace and contentment that can be had in your heart at the very least. When the Lord calls us to serve, we should not think we have nothing to offer because neither did the apostles. He takes whatever we have for as long as we are willing and uses this for His glory. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, imbue me with a sense of gratitude for all the blessings you have given me and grant me the grace to serve you with generosity of heart as my way of thanking you. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.